And so uh, the question we might ask then is what is democracy? What was Greek democracy really? I mean, we know rather more about Greek democracy than these guys did. Um, uh, uh, what, what, what was it? Well, uh, demokratia, right, the original Greek word, obviously a compound of demos and kratos, um, people and power, a compound invented um, in Athens um, sometime around or in the aftermath of uh, this revolution, whereby the institutional form of democracy was brought into existence. Um, yeah, demos in this compound means, at least so I have argued in some detail elsewhere, and there's bibliography on the website you can go to if you don't, don't believe this uh, just when I, when I say it. Um, uh, it means uh, uh, the whole of the um, uh, uh, citizen body, that citizen body both extensive and uh, socially diverse. In Athens, all native males, that is rich and poor, socially diverse in that uh, sense, rather than um, uh, the many uh, who are poor. That's the other way that demos could be used um, in Greek. Um, uh, in the original compound, uh, for uh, philological reasons, I think it can only be that it means the first, uh, that it means uh, demos as uh, all. Um, and kratos in this compound must, once again, uh, uh, for philological reasons, um, uh, mean the capacity to do things, not rule as domination. Um, and this, once again, is in the original meaning, not in the meaning that is used by democracy's critics. Um, uh, already by the uh, middle to late 5th uh, 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 century BC, critics are saying that demos is those others, um, those many poor people who dominate us, um, the worthy and uh, uh, relatively few wealthy um, uh, uh, gentlemen. Um, so they're saying that democracy is majority tyranny. Um, but in its original meaning, um, uh, it was not that. It was the, uh, uh, the, the, the meaning was uh, the people's capacity to do things. Okay. Certain conditions, I would argue, are necessary, are required for citizens if they are to collectively provide these public goods and collectively to limit these public bads in a mutable environment. Citizens must have liberty. That is, um, if uh, their speech and reason is at the core of this, they have to have free speech um, and freedom of association, diverse individuals, um, I uh, have to be able to collectively employ reason and deliberation to discover and implement solutions. Right? They have a basic line equality um, because it's only when e individuals have equal standing, equal say in decisions, that government can claim to be a truly collective enterprise. Right? Otherwise, it's just a few people running things and um, ordering uh, the rest. Um, uh, so it's not citizens collectively doing it unless there is some baseline equality. And finally, in order for um, uh, liberty and equality to matter, individuals have to have high standing, not just equal standing, but equal high standing. Um, uh, that is, they have to have dignity um, to be functionally free and equal. Um, in that, if you live without dignity, you live with humiliation and infantilization, and living within humiliation and infantilization means that freedom and equality really um, are not effectively, they don't effectively matter, that you, don't, you can't make them operative. So I add a, a, an additional assumption to this, that these uh, three conditions are and ought to be valued independently of their functional role in democracy. So the primary claim here is you can't get democracy without these three um, features. Um, and then I'm just asserting, um, but you may not accept it, but probably I bet most of you do, um, that these are valuable things. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing um, to have uh, a liberty, equality, um, and dignity. So these are um, uh, all part of then answering what democracy is good for. Um, democracy, if this argument goes through, because it can't exist without these features, it, these are necessary conditions, therefore must sustain these conditions. Um, I, because democracy requires liberty, equality, and dignity to produce public goods and to limit public bads, democratic rules must be designed so as to preserve, at least for citizens, 
these independently valued conditions of existence. And then if we look back at our first good thing that democracy provides, first thing that democracy is good for, it is when people have liberty, equality, and dignity that they most freely and most publicly exercise their constitutive capacities of reason and speech. So these are meant to run together, right? These independent conditions and the constitutive capacities argument are meant to run together um, in uh, answering the question, what is democracy, basic democracy, before we've added any features of liberalism from outside into it, basic democracy is good for then these things. Ah, yes, but Hobbes will demand to know how can such a system be stable, right? Why doesn't it just fall apart for the reasons that Hobbes adduced um, in uh, Leviathan? Uh, why don't the powerful just do what they want, um, violate the dignity of the weak, um, undermine therefore liberty and equality, and crash the system, right? How can this system be in an equilibrium without a lawless third party enforcer? So now I don't have a fully featured argument that, that I can at least offer in the amount of time I have, but I can give you a case study from, from Athens. And this is, this is about uh, how dignity sets limits on power. Um, so dignity limits power, limits even the power to use, um, uh, uh, to, uh, to achieve things um, collectively. Um, I, it uh, is required because um, uh, the functional effectiveness of liberty and equality demands uh, a dignity, um, and also uh, dignity moderates between the demands of liberty and equality. I am not arguing that tonight, but I'm happy to talk about that argument in the Q&A. Um, uh, since the dignity of all citizens must be protected, no democratic rule or public action by a democratic official or a powerful individual within a democracy can be allowed to infringe on dignity and infringements without sanctions um, uh, will crash the system, the democratic system, uh, and therefore co voluntary collective action in defense of law must take the place of Leviathan. That's the challenge. You know, that, if that doesn't happen, then I don't have an answer to Hobbes. Um, I don't have a way to explain why democracy might, uh-oh, but he's going to, of course, ask, it's all very fine and well to assert it, but how does it actually work? Um, dignity beyond the citizens. Um, uh, Demosthenes uh, uh, claims um, uh, also in this speech that Athenian law protected any person, either a child or a woman, or a man or uh, a woman or a man, free or slave, against intentional disrespect, against indignity, um, or other lawful treatment. Well, whether this is actually true in practice or not, but at least he's stating this. Um, and says that the Athenians do not think it right to treat with disrespect even the slaves whom they acquire by paying a price for them. But they have publicly made this law against disrespecting, against um, humiliation to prevent it. Once again, we don't know exactly how this plays out in practice, but it was possible to assert this in an Athenian court of law before a body of citizens. Um, and furthermore, if we look uh, uh, at a uh, hundred years earlier, um, the so-called old oligarch um, uh, giving a kind of blue guide or uh, uh, rough guide, I guess, uh, uh, to, uh, to Athens, to his fellow elites, says, when you go there, don't go hitting slaves. You can do that at home, it's fine, it's fun, we all enjoy it. He doesn't say that, but that's kind of the subtext, I think. Um, uh, he says, you can't, permit, you can't hit slaves, you can't hit foreigners. Um, and furthermore, um, uh, the slaves won't even give deference to you. Um, once again, true, not true, at least he's saying this, he's asserting this. Um, uh, and he says that's because Athenian citizens can't be distinguished from slaves. Uh, 
or foreigners. Uh, and if uh, powerful men were allowed to strike slaves or foreigners, they might mistakenly strike an Athenian citizen, says the old oligarch, um, uh, this anonymous uh, author. Um, and therefore, to secure their own security, the Athenian citizens pass laws forbidding mistreatment of slaves and foreigners. Once again, we don't know what the actual motivation of the Athenians uh, are like, but here is somebody trying to figure it out. And he actually is describing a world in which there is relative to other Greek city-states anyway, less um, public um, uh, humiliation of those who are not citizens uh, than uh, would be the norm in uh, other uh, more uh, so overtly um, uh, uh, elite peerage type uh, societies.